how the mind works, its relation to the brain, in particular in the sort of higher reaches of uh, imagination and thinking and, and, and creativity. Ones which particularly interest me have to do with perception, with visual perception and, and hearing and, and smelling. Um, the two uh, Columbia University scientists got a, a Nobel Prize three or four years ago for studies on olfaction. So sort of the nose has become rather important. But uh, uh, they're also cutting edge studies on memory and also on some of the um, uh, also partly on, on people's motives and decisions sometimes when they gamble or play games and uh, sample games or decisions are given to people and their brains are um, while they're lying in what's called a functional MRI. So we can partly now visualize the parts of the brain which become active when people make a decision, take a risk, balance things. So, um, so this sort of work is, is very central at Columbia and, and elsewhere. Um, yeah, I, I've uh, very much so. I've I've always been interested in in vision, and and even in my first book, in migraine, about a third of the book is devoted to the visual phenomena of migraine. I mean, one can see zigzags, which which expand. There are all sorts of interesting visual migraines. Maybe this is partly a personal thing because I've had visual migraines, though no headaches all my life, and many people in my family had. And in fact, this is quite common. Um, uh, but I, um, I want to write about visual hallucinations. This interests me, as in my previous book I wrote about musical hallucinations, and especially the musical hallucinations which may go with, with deafness when people, if people become somewhat deaf, as they get less less auditory input, less is coming in from the outside, then the brain may start to generate sounds, and particularly the sound of music from the inside. And it's similar as people um, have impaired vision. Um, I, these hallucinations are, are rather common, these visual hallucinations which go with visual impairment. Uh, people can be terrified of them because you know, seeing things, hearing things, they think a hallucination is a sign of insanity. But there are all sorts of benign hallucinations, and so they don't mention them. But in fact, there are hundreds of thousands of people who have such hallucinations. Um, I will add that in a minor way, I'm one of them myself. Uh, now I have some visual <laughs> impairment. So, so this will be one subject, but I also want to write about color vision and stereo vision and oh, all sorts of aspects of vision about powers of visualization and visual memory. I, I want to write about the visual world. And as, as with most of my books, these will really be a mixture of stories of patients and, and reflections somewhere between a, a narrative and an essay.